I get asked many, many times if you need to be good at maths to get into engineering. And well, the answer is yes. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Nah, I'm just joking with you guys. I'm an engineer, I can't just tell you an answer without justifying it or explaining why, can I? So here's why knowing maths as an engineer is as important as knowing how to read for someone who's studying English literature. If you're able to use maths when working on engineering problems, then you're going to be able to make much more smarter design decisions. After all, an engineer's job is pretty much to design and build something that is the best within a set of constraints. One of the most guaranteed constraints that you will have as an engineer is money. Therefore, it's never feasible really to build all your designs in real life. Let's take, for example, you're designing a rocket engine and you have maybe, I don't know, 10, 15 different designs. Well, you can't go ahead and build every single different iteration and even test every single one because, well, this would be crazy expensive. So as an engineer, you have to somehow figure out from your design which engine is likely to be the best because you might only have the budget to test two designs in real life. Now, here's where maths comes in to save the day. Oh my God. So firstly, you can perform some rough calculations to just sense check some of your designs. And this might involve things like performing simple, but you know, somewhat complex heat transfer calculations just to verify that your design will actually work in real life and no components will melt and stuff like that. And say for example, that your design requirement is to develop a rocket engine with the highest thrust value, then you can even do some simple fluid mechanics calculations and also use the rocket thrust equation to get a ballpark figure. But with these sort of hand calculations, there are a lot of assumptions that go into them. So let's now turn it up a notch and go to the next level of mathematics. So that puts your landing zone at 5.0667 degrees north, 77.3333 degrees west, which is here. Give or take 20 square miles. I like your numbers. So we're sticking with our scenario that we want to design a rocket engine that basically produces the most thrust. But let's hone in a bit and focus on the actual nozzle itself. So now we want to try and estimate the thrust produced at the exit plane of the nozzle. So when it comes to the hand calculations, there's a lot of things that you're not actually considering. And some of these things are the friction of the exhaust gases with the wall of the nozzle, turbulent flow, and also the changing density of the hot gas. Now, let me introduce to you a little friend of mine called computational fluid dynamics. In other words, CFD. So CFD is basically a way how engineers use computers to simulate the fluid flow around or inside an object. It is far more accurate than doing hand calculations if you know what you're doing. You may be thinking, if a computer can simulate this for me, why do I need to know the maths? Well, hold your horses, sunshine, because I will tell you, hold on. Okay, let me, let me just show you how CFD works on a piece of paper. So let me just go grab a piece of paper. So I'm basically gonna show you how CFD works on a piece of paper because it's just easier to explain than actually showing you on a computer. So first of all, what we wanna do is, since we wanna model the actual fluid or the hot gas in this case when it comes to a rocket nozzle, we want to create a geometry that resembles the actual fluid in the rocket nozzle. So what we want to do is we want to draw out something that resembles a rocket nozzle. So if you excuse my terrible drawing skills, this is kind of like what we get. And just to make it a bit more obvious, so this is the top of the rocket nozzle, so where the hot gases will come in from. And then this is where all the exhaust gases will be expelled out the back. The next step of doing a CFD analysis is you need to basically make this fluid area into lots of tiny pieces. And this is what you call meshing. 
Great, so now we have our mesh. And the general rule is that the smaller your squares are, the more accurate your simulation will be. But that comes with a price because it will also take longer to compute your simulation. So the next step with CFD is basically to define your boundary conditions, which are to basically help the software understand what the heck to even do and what even to start with. So some of the things you need to explicitly tell the CFD software is, for example, the type of inlet this is. So this would be a velocity inlet, I believe, if I am not mistaken. And then we also have to pass in the temperature of like the gas here, the uh, velocity of the gas, so how fast it's going. And we also need to state the exit pressure over here because this is a pressure outlet. And we also have to define like what are the walls. So for example, the edges of these rocket nozzles is the wall. So what does um, the CFD software actually do with this now? So let's, let's have a look at one of these individual squares. So let's take this square here. So say if I picked one from over here. And this is in essence what you call a control volume. And what you do with a control volume is you want to figure out, so firstly you will know the temperature and velocity and you'll probably know like the density of the fluid and stuff like that. And in essence you'll know all of that stuff at this point. But what you want to do is you want to figure out those values after. So from between this point and this point, what changes? So what is like the temperature afterwards? What is the velocity afterwards? And what is the air density afterwards? And you basically do this for pretty much every cell in this model. And the way, you, the way this propagates is that your first block over here calculates these values. And then this second block over here uses these as the input and then in essence it propagates all the way along until you basically completed the calculation for all these little control volumes. You know that we want to get from our initial condition here to the condition after this control volume and we do this by solving a particular function but what is this function we solve? Well the truth is we don't actually solve the function and this is a completely other video in itself. For most CFD simulations what the software is doing is basically finding approximate solutions for an equation known as the Navier-Stokes equation. And again even that is a lie because it's not just one equation. In fact the Navier-Stokes equations are a set of three different equations. These equations basically describe the motion, the conservation of mass, the conservation of momentum of a Newtonian viscous fluid. There are in fact other equations you can use when you're doing these sort of simulations. A good engineer will be able to choose the right equations to use in such simulations because you can use something like the Euler's formula if you want to assume the flow is inviscid, which will help your simulation run quicker. Or you can use other types of models to, you know, model turbulence better and so on. So this is why you really need to understand maths and the equations behind the CFD to really sort of understand what's the best thing to choose when running these simulations. And lastly, I hope this video did not scare you away from engineering. And I wanna say that if you are debating on what or not, whether or not engineering's for you, um, but you are great in maths, I'd say you're, you're already like 70% there because engineering is pretty much mostly maths. And if you're able to do maths and understand maths, both from like a, I guess if you're able to remember equations and stuff like that, or if you're able to derive them from scratch, I mean, happy days, like you're, you're gonna do fine. And if you learned something new from this video, definitely hit the subscribe button and comment down below your thoughts on maths and engineering. And also hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And if you wanted to see what it's like studying aerospace engineering at university, then check out this other video over here. And I will see you in another video. Goodbye.